Thank you to Robert Nielsen, Anon525, Miguel Cerro Mill, The Labyrinth Maker, El Mayim, Leary L2F2, Morphemus, Quirky, Mateus D. Rodriguez, Robbie, Tangerines, Fishy Cuber, and probably others for requesting this episode. Also, thank you to Jan Awalo for providing some of the audio. Welcome to Conlang Critic, the show that gets facts wrong about your favorite Conlang. I'm Jan Misoli, and in this episode, we'll be looking at the universal musical language, Solraisal. I mean, Sol Re Sol. That's a word that just means language. Anyway, Sol Re Sol is an oxlang that was created in 1827 by the late Francois Sudra. It's the first known example of someone making a language to be used for international communication, predating Esperanto by 60 years. Although it was made by Sudra, he probably wasn't too proud of it, seeing how it wasn't published until after he died. It was based on the seven notes of the Western major scale, and it hypothetically can be used as a spoken language, a written language in a few ways, a purely musical language, a sign language, a flag language, and basically any other type of communication you can think of. Its tonemes are C. So, fa, mi, re, do. These seven pitches are the Western C major scale. They're important to music theory for reasons that are beyond the scope of this video. What is within the scope of this video is the sheer number of ways these tonemes can be represented. This chart has a lot of them, but there's a whole lot more, which mostly exists because the C major scale itself can be represented in a lot of ways, due to its aforementioned importance to music theory. The way it's usually written is using solfege, a set of single syllables that correspond to the major scale that you probably learned about from the sound of music. Of course, the English version of solfege calls the note below do T instead of C, which makes it so that every syllable starts with a different sound, but this is based on the French version, so you don't get that advantage. A language made out of pitch might sound vaguely similar to the idea of a tonal language, but Sorisol is fundamentally different from tonal languages in a few ways. Most importantly, Sorisol's tonemes are about absolute pitch rather than relative pitch. A high tone in a natural tonal language just needs to be high compared to the other tones in a specific utterance. In Sorisol, the toneme C, for example, needs to be at the same pitch every time. As mentioned before, Sorisol can be written many, many ways, which would be incredibly impressive if it weren't for one problem. Sorisol has more phonemes than just its tones. Tones can be pronounced in four ways. Short unstressed, short stressed, long unstressed, and long stressed. These correspond to grammar stuff that I'll get to in a bit, but the point is that most of the many ways Sorisol is written have no way of indicating stress or length, meaning that there's no way to distinguish between re si mi re, re si mi re, re si mi re and re, si, mi, re. The grammar of Sorisol is somewhat odd. See, Sorisol doesn't have any affixes. Instead, the morphology uses stress and length. A word is nounified by stressing the first toneme, adjectified by stressing the second to last toneme, and pluralized by lengthening the final toneme. On top of that, stressing the final toneme marks the feminine, which is another example of an old oxling not seeing the problem with assuming everyone's male unless otherwise specified. But wait, there's more. You don't stress the final toneme in the word, you stress the final toneme in the phrase. So, do me fa do means man. Do me fa do means woman. Do me fa do mi so means good man and do me fa do mi so means good woman. Why this can't just be done with adjectives meaning male and female is a mystery. The vocabulary is mathematically sound, but I wouldn't really call it musical. Words are kinda organized into categories, so words that start with the same toneme are kinda related. Also, if you say a word backwards, you usually get its opposite, so mi so means good and so mi means bad. That's all well and good, but like, when you're listening to any amount of sorry soul text being sung or played on an instrument, it doesn't sound very melodic. That's because individual words sound more like randomly selected notes than sections of a melody. Like mi do See me. Starts and ends on the same note, but other than that, it doesn't sound like it's going anywhere. This sort of thing might be unavoidable, but it would have been nice if Sutra made at least some attempt to have his musical language sound more musical. All in all, I'd say that Sorry Soul doesn't hold up very well. The idea of a musical conlang is great, but the execution here is subpar. Of course, the par didn't even exist at the time Sorry Soul was made. It was the first attempt at making an international language, and it really shows. Modern conlangers can defo learn from Sutra's mistakes. That in mind, I'd say that I like Sorry Soul more than I like Interlingua, but not as much as I like Owie, making it the 8th best interlang reviewed so far. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, where I'll be reviewing Loglon.